Hi, I'm Hamish Black and welcome to Writing On Games. Believe it or not, there was a point in time where the notion of accurately representing the art of skateboarding was most effectively realised, well, here. We live in a post-skate world, we've seen how realistic the depictions of skateboarding can be. As such, the idea that the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series started off as a means of legitimising the sport in the eyes of the mainstream may seem a little absurd. I mean, just look at it. Look at the speed at which you careen through these places where people probably shouldn't be, how high you can go, how seemingly effortlessly you glide around the entire level, coming across super weird scenarios along the way. I mean, it's fairly well accepted at this stage that the series met with a slow, ungracious demise. This was a result of superfluous sequels that superficially attempted to cash in on the culture, forcing dated, juvenile aesthetics in your face. Well, what made the older games different? Aside from branding, what here is actually indicating an accurate portrayal of the sport? Well, I would go as far as to say that 3 remains one of the most streamlined representations of the mindset behind skating that gaming has seen, precisely because of its heightened artifice as a video game. Through the abstract nature of its mechanics as they relate to actual skating, 3 is able to timelessly convey what it means to skate. Let's take a step back for a minute though. See, I was able to pick up 3 again recently thanks to a lull in the barrage of new releases that has characterised the start of the year. And man, it's remarkable how well that game holds up. I played it for hours, actively trying to find flaws in the game's design, and honestly, I came up short. It plays like it could have been released yesterday. Every one of the game's systems is perfectly tuned to create a stunningly pure gaming experience, carefully iterating on the vision laid out by the first two games while avoiding the superfluity of future titles. It's through this purity that the game can present its vision of the sport. How do we define that purity though? To me, you could sum up Tony Hawk 3's player goal as follows. Maintain fluid, balanced movement through a level while making the numbers as big as possible within a 2 minute time limit. Now let's examine later title Underground 2, where you build up a team of pro skaters and some of the Jackass cast in order to travel the world meandering through different environments before activating a particular goal that might have you skating or it might have you controlling steve while riding a mechanical bull and the goal is to create as much chaos as possible sometimes but sometimes it's also to get a high score I guess and there's nut shots and Bam's dad is fat and sometimes there's a time limit and sometimes there's not. To say it's diffuse would be to put it lightly. On the other hand, Tony Hawk 3 is so focused that, to me, it doesn't even matter that the characters are on skateboards. On a mechanical level, it's not even really about skating. It's solely about movement, and that movement ain't exactly realistic. By 3, you have both manuals and reverbs, meaning you can essentially maintain a combo throughout the length, width and height of a level if you want to. It's not about how stylish the tricks you pull off are, it's about how many you can fit in before you hit the ground. Individual tricks don't provide many points, but when each trick adds to a score multiplier, quantity rather than quality becomes the incentive. The time limit adds a sense of urgency to proceedings without becoming frustrating due to the near instantaneous nature of restarting a run. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Tony Hawk 3 is not skate. It's not realistically representing skating through the streets. It is sheer artifice. It is quintessentially a video game. It evokes the mechanical coherence of old high score arcade games, which are easy to pick up and play, but immensely difficult to master. It's the kind of game you can complete in four minutes, but the discipline required to get to that point is where the depth of the game lies. Tony Hawk 3 is about skateboarding in the same way Asteroids is about going on a space adventure. Sure, it's technically what you do, but it's also more mechanical than that, more artificial. And the game is better for this artifice. 3 at its core is about training yourself to get better through discipline and understanding the mechanics of what you're trying to do. Once you internalise this, you begin to see the world in a different way. You see every part of the world as a means to push the boundaries of it even further. 
Every trivial rail, each inconsequential elevation shifts in its intended purpose, instead becoming a means of getting you to places you couldn't previously go. Once you get there, you know that you achieved that through your own skill, making it feel all the more satisfying. What I just said could be applied to either Tony Hawk 3 or any number of interviews given by the Birdman himself talking about his love of the sport. I think that says a lot about how the focus on overtly gamey mechanics represents the purity of the sport, no matter how abstract it may seem visually. And it's clear that 3 represented a peak of sorts in this endeavour. Even 4 removing something as seemingly trivial as the time limit may have offered more freedom to explore, but also removed any urgency from or reason for maintaining the fluid movement that so defined those earlier games. More egregiously, however, we then saw the addition of full-blown narratives to proceedings in the Underground series, which later saw full-blown celebrities representing a more juvenile side to the sport. The CKY prank side of things was an important part of the culture's evolution for sure, but focusing on it so heavily diluted the lucidity of vision seen in previous games. Put it this way, people will play Tony Hawk 3 in years to come and get an idea of what it's going for fairly immediately. People will play Underground 2 and say, who the hell is Bam Margera and why do people treat this idiot with such reverence? It's why Skate became the dominant franchise of the sport. It ultimately represented the same values that later Tony Hawk games left behind, albeit in a more grounded, realistic fashion. Those later titles showed skating as something of a status symbol, as a means of sticking it to the man and getting people to listen to you when you shout, get out of my room, mom, rather than a means of teaching you about yourself, the world around you, and how you can overcome your own limitations. By emphasising cultural aesthetics over streamlined design, the later titles placed themselves in such a specific point in time that they felt dated and tired almost as soon as they launched. People quickly grow out of that rebellious phase and almost always look back on it with utter disdain. In the same way, people tend to look back on the titles that pushed it so hard, and it's not unreasonable to say that some might blame those games for the death of that particular brand of skate culture. As a whole though, the culture never really died out. It might lean more towards the fringes of the mainstream now, but it's also not driven by the same kind of teen angst and nutshots that made the games look like the cast of Jackass directed a Green Day video. Instead, there's a desire to creatively navigate the world around us, to see the world differently as something conquerable, both spatially and philosophically. There's something childlike to this desire, sure. It's an escape from the constraints of everyday life by going faster and higher than anyone else. However, there's also a maturity to maintaining the discipline required to learn a craft and hone one's skills to do things that others cannot. Essentially, skateboarding as it stands represents a desire to grow, something the distinctly gamey mechanics of Tony Hawk 3 wholly reflect. Games like Underground 2 and American Wasteland wallow in the visuals of the juvenile, attempting to cash in on the rebellious phase all teens go through. By rejecting that dated perception of skate culture, by focusing on the clarity and depth of its systems, 3 was able to capture a far more distilled version of what it meant to skate. As such, it feels just as fresh now as it did all those years ago. So I hope you enjoyed this piece on Tony Hawk 3. If you did, why not click subscribe like 50,000 other people have done. Holy moly. <laughs> click the little bell thing and check out the podcast in the description. If you feel like going the extra mile, however, you can always support the channel directly via Patreon, just like the wonderful folks currently on screen have done. Special thanks go to Justin's Holderness, James Doring, Iago Fox Obuza, Biggie Smith, Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsyuk, Christian Kuhneman, Nico Blakely, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. The support that every single one of my patrons has shown me has been absolutely astonishing and I honestly cannot thank you enough. And with that, I'm Hamish Black and this has been Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.